Hey there, it's Bree, and this is my August wrap up. So, in the month of August, I ended up reading 26 total books. 13 of those were contemporary, 5 of them were historicals, 8 of them were a combination of fantasy, paranormal, or sci fi. I read two nonfiction books. And I listened to most of them on audio. 25 of them I listened to on audio, and only one of them I read the ebook for. Two of the books that I read this month were ARCs. I participated in one readathon, the Historical Romance Readathon, and I will put my reading blog for that down below. I did one buddy read, and I DNF'd one book. And then as far as my star ratings, they are pretty good. There are not as many three stars as I usually have in a month, so... I don't have any one or two stars. I only have one three star. I have eight four stars and 13 five star reads. Three of the books that I read this month, I'm considering some of my all time favorites. And then I reread four books, which is more than I have in the past few months, but that's because I did a reread of an entire series. Before I get into all of the books that I read, I just want to kind of explain how my wrap ups have been working lately. I do recent reads every two weeks, and in those, I go more in depth about the books that I read read in these wrap-ups. I'm just ranking the books that I read, so I'm kind of just listing all of them from my least favorite to my favorite. So I am going to start with the one book that I DNF'd, and I'm pretty sad about this because it was Kindred by Octavia Butler. So this book is a historical, and it's about a woman, a black woman, who gets thrown back in time, like she keeps getting sucked back and forth through time. And when she's thrown back in time, it's this one white boy who keeps sucking her back, like it seems like he's almost calling her back. Anytime he's in fear or anything, she shows up there and it turns out that it's like her great, 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 great grandfather or something like that. I don't know how many greats. But I only got maybe 20-25% into this book, and for some reason, I enjoyed what the historical part of it, which is interesting, but something about how it was written I just wasn't vibing with. I don't know, it, it felt very choppy to me, the writing did, especially when she was in present day, and I just wasn't getting into it. But to be fair, I have been in kind of a reading slump lately, so that could be part of it, and it's been really hard for me to finish books lately, and it's been taking me a lot longer to finish them. I just ended up putting this one down because I knew that I would struggle my way through it or I would just keep putting it off. So I just decided to DNF it. I may go back to it. I may not. And then I ended up rereading the Twilight series. And the reason why I reread this was because I read Midnight Sun this month. And I talk more about this, like I said, in my recent reads. I will link my two recent reads down below. And then a few of these books are going to be books that I talk about in my next recent reads that are going up next week. And then the one three-star read that I had was the Stranger Beside Me, Ted Bundy, The Shocking Inside Story by Anne Rule. This is a nonfiction book that was written by a woman who actually knew Ted Bundy. I thought it was going to be more interesting than it was, and I didn't really like her take on it. I felt like she wasn't harsh enough on him, and I get that it was because you know, she was friends with him. But anyway, so I gave that one three stars. That was my least favorite book of the month. And then moving on to my four stars, I read The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert. I read this one from Libro FM from their advanced listeners copies. Very, very relevant for today. And it is a YA contemporary book. The next book that I read was Mind Till Midnight. This is by Lisa Klapis. It's the first book in what is the series? It's the Hathaway series. My daughter Rory actually picked this for me to read in the month of August. And I did. And I enjoyed it. Next was my buddy read that I read with Charles from Books on Stereo. We listened to the audiobook. It's Halfway to the Grave, Night Huntress, book number one by Janine Frost. This is like an old school paranormal adult romance. And then next on my list is 100,000 Words by Naira Dawn. I listened to this on Audible Escape. This is a contemporary romance. It's a male-male contemporary romance, kind of new adult romance, I would say. And then I listened to It Ain't Me, Babe, Hades Hangman, book number one by Tilly Cole. This was my first Tilly Cole that I ever read. I didn't like it quite as much as I thought I would, but I did still really like it. I think motorcycle romances just aren't for me. I talk, I'm going to talk more about this in my upcoming recent reads video. And then next on my list is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is a book that my husband picked out for me to read this month. I actually ended up reading part of it physically and then listening to the rest of it on audio. I suggest either way. It was both enjoyable and I liked this more than I thought I would. Next was Block Shot. It's Hoops book number two by Kennedy Ryan. 
and I really liked this book, but it has a ton of trigger warnings, a very unlikable hero in my opinion. There are things that happen in this book that I don't think a lot of people would like, but somehow Kennedy Ryan is able to pull it off. And then after that is A Lie for a Lie, All In, book number one by Helena Hunting. I've been wanting to read this book forever because it's a spinoff of the Pucked series. So you see a lot of the Pucked series guys in the background. It's a hockey romance. And there is a trope in this that I can't stand, but I loved everything else about this book. And now moving on to my five-star reads. My first five-star read, surprisingly enough, was Midnight Sun. It's Twilight book number five by Stephanie Meyer. It just came out. I talk more about this in my recent reads. Then next is I Can't Make This Up, Life Lessons by Kevin Hart. This is a nonfiction book by Kevin Hart autobiography. Very, very funny, super interesting. I love Kevin Hart, so I loved reading about his life story. And then next is Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. I read this for the historical romance readathon. It has to do with the Underground Railroad and its historical romance, and I talk more about that in my readathon vlog, and I will link that down below. And then next is a super dark romance. It's Dark Notes by Pam Godwin. This is the second book that I read by Pam Godwin. Really enjoyed this one. It's not for everyone though. Like I said, it's a dark taboo romance. It's an age gap. The girl is underage. She's 17. And it's also a teacher-student romance. So absolutely not for everyone, but I enjoyed it. And next is another book that I read for the Historical Romance Readathon. It was the Historical Romance Readathon Buddy Read. That was Lady Sophia's Lover, Bow Street Runners, book number two by Gleesa Kleypas. Definitely want to read on in the series and read the first book in the series, but I really, really liked it. Probably my favorite Lisa Kleypas novel that I've read so far. Next up is The Kingmaker, All the King's Men, book number one, and it's by Kennedy Ryan. I ended up finally reading it this month and really enjoyed it. I will talk more about that in my upcoming recent reads video. Next was another very surprising read. It was Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. I really thought this was going to be a throwaway novel, but it really wasn't. I was pleasantly surprised about this one. Really enjoyed it. Five stars. And then next was actually an arc that I read, and I'm so glad that I requested this arc because it was so good. Such a great YA contemporary romance with a great, strong female heroine and a really healthy relationship. It is The Knockout by Sanjani Patel. Might already be out. I can't quite remember. And then next is Neighborly. It's Erotic Accommodations, book number one by Katrina Jackson. This is my very first Katrina Jackson. This is a novella. It's a female-female kind of romance, but there are guys involved. Like it's kind of a polyamorous type relationship and super short book, but super, super steamy. So good. Really enjoyed that one. And then next is another historical romance. It's The Beast of Beswick. I'm going to, I say this wrong every single time and it's not pronounced how it's spelled, but I'm just going to say it how it's spelled. The Beast of Beswick, Everly Sisters, book number one by Emily Howard. I read this with a few of my friends. I will link the live show where we talk more about it down below. And now we're moving on to my three favorite books that I read this month. So coming in at number three is Grip. It's Grip, book number one by Kennedy Ryan, but you do not read this book for in the series. You actually read Flow, which is grip book number 0.5. That's the prequel. You want to read that one first. I liked that one more than I liked Grip, only by a very small amount. But I actually had read Grip a while ago and ended up rereading it because I finally read Flow and then I understood that relationship so much more and absolutely fell in love with it. It's an interracial romance between a white woman who is very wealthy but has a very difficult family life and then a black rapper who has clawed his way to the top. It's so, so good. And it's written by Kennedy Ryan. So it has all the things you can expect from her. And then my favorite read of the month was a book that I read for the historical romance readathon. It was Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. It was my very first Pam Godwin. And I am obsessed with this book. Again, this is another book that is not for everybody. But if you like dark romances, if you like taboo romances, if you like pirates, and you like historicals, you will love this one. You don't even really have to like historicals to like this one. I feel like this is a really good book for people who think they don't like historical romances because you don't have like the things that I think turn people off from historical romances. Like the heroine is super strong. She's a badass. She's a freaking pirate. So I mean, what more can you ask for? So, so good. It was my favorite book of the month. Oh my gosh, guys, I think that's it. Like, that's it. That's my wrap up. Those are all the books that I read in August. Let me know down below what you read in August. If you have an August wrap up, please link it down below. I'd love to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy reading.